my name is Sam Durkin and today I'm going to show you how to paint a forest landscape. This uh, is the canvas we're going to be working on. It's 36 inches by 24. It's pre-stretched on a wooden frame. I prefer working on these type of canvases rather than canvas board because you can hang this straight on the wall if you like. So we're going to need some equipment and this is my this is my painting table that I keep next to the canvas. As you see it's a little bit of a mess because uh, that's the kind of painter I am. It's uh, got a sort of a plastic covering over top of it so it doesn't get ruined. Also the floor See, that's all covered with plastic and the walls, as you may have noticed, uh, too, are covered in decorator sheets. We're going to need equipment and the equipment we're going to use is two inch brushes. These are Skyflow brushes. They're good quality artist brushes and some one inch brushes too, just for some little tiny extra detail. And I will probably make use of this fan brush as well. Um, I've got some sponges on order that um, hopefully arrive in a few days time and uh, we may well be practicing up with those and you'll get to see them uh, in action uh, essentially for the first time I'm going to use them you're going to see me having a go at using them as well so we'll have a go at learning together. We're going to need some paint and we need um, three primary colours and white. Now I always use um, primaries uh, because I find that they allow you to mix any colours you want but the three primaries we're going to need are primary red, primary blue and primary yellow, sometimes called process cyan, process magenta and process yellow, um, although they're essentially interchangeable and the names uh, are the same thing. I don't like using pre-mixed colours uh, because those colours are essentially muddied and we can't ever get to uh, a pure form of colour from that. Right, well I'm going to get cracking on the base coat of paint. The base coat of paint is essentially a coat of paint where we go for a, a medium tone that uh, represents what the painting will look like. We're not going for any kind of accuracy here, we're not trying to depict the painting in general, uh, we, we just want to get some colour onto the canvas and a colour that um, is sympathetic uh, with the end result of the painting. Now this uh, landscape has got some slightly yellowy green trees uh, in the background, so uh, I'm essentially I'm going to use a yellowy green, sort of maybe from about here upwards, and then uh, it gets sort of reddish brown as there's, there's leaves on the ground from, from an autumn scene. We've uh, we've covered the canvas in our basic uh, undercoat. Um, as you see, we've we've got uh, some general idea of maybe of a forest going on here. It's 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 very rough at this stage. All we've done is essentially put some colour onto the canvas to get that, that, first, that, first, that first bit of colour on. There's still little tiny bits of gaps maybe that the, uh, that the canvas is showing through um, and that's okay at this stage. Um, we are going to add lots and, more, lots and lots more layers onto the canvas as we go through it. I've put in some general sort of impressions that maybe there's some trees going on here. We've, we'll make this as loose as possible. It, it, we, we really don't want any detail at this stage, partly because as we go through the paintings, we come from the back to the front, to the foreground. Um, we want these almost chaotic mess shapes uh, that we've left behind here um, to form that kind of uh, distance. If you imagine if uh, you're looking at this, let's say we just sort of screw up our eyes a bit and squint, uh, maybe for me, like to take my glasses off. This is, is maybe <laughs> we might see the forest without your glasses on um, into the distance. So that kind of that distance far away feel we need to put that in first. The next stage of this will be to put in some strong darker shades because it's much better to work from dark to light generally uh, with an acrylic painting so we're going to put some uh, more tree shapes in maybe maybe even some some shadow areas in here next but we want to keep it as loose as possible still we don't want to get bogged down in any detail so we are going to continue to use a two inch brush for this okay uh, it's it's a large brush, um, but uh, we must keep this this sort of messy detail going on. Um, the colour of paint that we're going to use to mix up for this, we're essentially going to mix all the primaries together um, to form a, a kind of a black. But um, we'll add an extra little bit of red, maybe, and maybe a little yellow, and that will soften it, and it won't be it won't be a very dark black. It'll be sort of a brownie uh, type of black. This will be burnt umber. We could use this if we wanted to. Uh, I, I tend to find you get a less dynamic painting if you if you use a pre-mixed colour. If I mix it myself on, on the uh, on the palette, 
Um, the colour will change uh, as I'm putting it onto the canvas and that will add d some dynamism and some energy to the painting uh, towards the end. It doesn't always show up so well on the camera, uh, maybe even in a photograph, but when you come to look at it in the real life, <laughs> those, those sort of changes of colour uh, really do make a painting much more energetic. Right, well, I'm going to get on with that and we'll come back in a little while and you'll probably catch me uh, doing some of the painting, but uh, obviously I can't show you all of it because these video diaries which will be showing you how to paint usually take two or three days, sometimes a week. Okay, right, this is starting to look a lot more like a forest now. We put some darker areas in to give, to give us a the notion of some trees, just to give us that sort of general strength. I'm planning that we should have some light, that the centre of the light should be sort of coming through the trees and, and out from here, and maybe with lights. So if you notice, see, we've got the lines coming around from the trees and the shadows. So it's sort of coming in this sort of general direction. What I'm hoping for is, is that we get it sort of breaking through these trees here. So essentially the light is sort of behind, behind here, but I'm, I'm intentionally hoping that it's going to be coming through the here and it will essentially sort of obliterate the, the trees that we're seeing here. So this tree, uh, I've already put in a sort of a, a, a concave area here where I, I feel the light will, will break, will break into that. What I'm going to do is mark it in because uh, I will go over it later. I want that light to feel like it's it's breaking through the this this tree here. Uh, so we get some there's some strength in here, but I'm keeping it as loose as possible. Okay, so I'm going over while it's still wet with just water on the brush as well, just to break up some of the hard brush strokes to get it all merging in. Uh, and people have asked me how I get that kind of misty effect. I did this little defocus thing. This is essentially it. You paint it in and then you wipe it out and it's, it is a little bit scary when you're doing it because you spent all this time painting it in you want it exactly how it is but then you've got to go over it the, with, with a wet paintbrush and, and obliterate it just just get in there and don't worry that you're, you're damaging it don't worry that those those lines are already broken up because you're going to go over it again later it's it's okay it, it, it'll dry it'll dry in and, and we can we can fix anything that you've done here so we we want to put as much chaos into this picture as possible and to do that we're going to need to we're going to need to blur it and wet it up make it uh, sort of a bit more chaotic but right this needs to dry now we'll leave it for maybe an hour or two and we come back to it i like to sit and look at my painting for a good few hours because it gives me an idea of where to go next with it You'll have the advantage that you can see where we're going next with it, so maybe you won't have to look at it for quite so long. But I think even if even if you're painting this yourself, which uh, you, you might want to choose to do, your painting isn't going to look exactly like this. We, we aren't. You're, it's unlikely that you're going to be putting the trees exactly in the right places. But hopefully you'll get an impression that when we're thinking about this painting, we're thinking about where the light's coming from. It's coming from behind the trees and coming through the trees. So the shadows underneath and in the trees should be... Um, the, the light should be coming out to reflect that. So this tree here, which is, it is sort of behind light, will have the light coming. It's sort of essentially coming str straightish down here. So it's got a, it's got a little area. So maybe the light's coming from from here, really, isn't it? Because we've got these ones coming out there. I think it's probably going to shoot off quite drastically over there. So it's probably coming from here. But I want to get the impression that this tree is getting in the way and this light's coming through and around it. Okay, so. We're going to leave that to dry and uh, we'll come back in a bit and uh, we'll see where we are in the next stage.
Okay, right, well, as you see, we've worked quite a lot on the painting here. It's, uh, there's a great deal that's been done, uh, mostly to bring extra light through uh, the trees, just to give that kind of impression that there's, there's light coming out. We've darkened these trees here and all the way through. Um, and we put in sort of splodges of, of extra white and little bits of yellow just to just to bring the effect that there's there's light pouring through the trees. Now, most of this has been done uh, with with the one inch brush, um, although some of it has been done with a two inch. Uh, there's been a little tiny bit where I've I've used I've used a sponge occasionally, and um, you may have seen that in, in the some of the bits where I was showing you how I was doing it, but generally um, I've generally just used a two inch brush for this part of the painting. Um, the darker bits here where we've got the uh, where the leaves coming in, we've used the fan brush because it's given us this kind of nice sort of effect that we feel like these are kind of leaves and trees are coming through here all the way through. We darken the shadows a little bit here to give a real effect that the light's pouring through. Uh, as you see, we've got some depth coming in now. So this light in the background really is starting to pour in. You have to work on in layers um, with a, an acrylic painting because if I carried on painting that, it would just got muddied and we'd have blurred it across. Now, now it's dry, when I paint on this again, with the white or any other color that I use, it'll, it'll be much more intense and we'll be able to build up layer upon layer upon layer of lightness until we get that point where the light just appears to be pouring out of the painting and essentially we're painting light here. Just in the, uh, in the old style of the Impressionists, we are painting the light. That's, that's the important thing here. We're not painting the objects. We almost try to, almost try to forget that these are trees we're just painting the light that's coming through and the light that's landing on things and the darkness and the contrast between those. And this impression and these abstract shapes, as we see, when added together, they give us a mind impression that this is a forest. Something very clever about the human mind is that we can, we can see something and then our brain looks at it and we try to find a pattern. We try to find a pattern that we recognise, something that, something that we understand. We only have to give a certain amount of visual cues to do that. We don't have to paint every single leaf. We don't have to paint every bit of blade of grass, every nodule in a, in a tree. I mean, while we could do this, we don't have to. And in fact, it's slightly more enjoyable to view a painting that we know we're sort of participating in. It's sort of uh, between us and the audience. We're giving the audience something to do. They're looking at the picture and their brain is automatically, magically just going, that's a forest scape. But then the second part of their brain, which is maybe the analytical part, the bit that solves problems, comes and tells them, B -b 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 there's just paint strokes here. And I think there's something sort of just slightly joyful about that kind of intermesh between the two. Anyway, right, we're going to carry on with this a little bit more. Um, probably lighten some of the areas here, bring that kind of up a little bit so that so it's kind of matching with the brightness by the trees here. Probably do this a little bit more, get some more brightness in here, maybe come over some of these areas of lightness with some more darkness. So as we keep working up, backwards and forwards with the paint. So we paint in the light areas, we paint in the dark areas, we paint in the medium areas. We keep doing it over and over and over again, layer after layer. And it builds up this kind of impression of what's there. While we don't necessarily do every detail just by sort of painting in the general areas where those things are, we get an impression that that's, that's what's there in our mind. So we'll carry on working on it and I'll come back and I'll show you what we got in the next stage.
But as you see, we finally finished the painting. It still remained very abstract in, in many ways. If we come in nice and close here, we can see there's lots of crazy little splodges and lines and that stuff, and it's all sort of quite random in feel. Um, yet, uh, when we draw ourselves back, we see this is clearly a forest forest scene uh, with like pouring uh, through the trees. And that's essentially the, the what we're trying to aim for um, in this sort of abstract realist uh, impressionist style uh, is, is to get this, this feeling of both abstract uh, paint, paint strokes and brush strokes and elements and yet at the end of the day we still know what we're looking at and we get that sort of feel those mix of those two things together so I think that's been uh, that's been very successful this painting can take me a week I don't know how much you get paid a week I think at the end of the day I think a painting like this I think we could probably charge in a gallery because they're going to add they're going to add costs onto that. So in a gallery, you might be looking at maybe six hundred pounds, seven hundred pounds. Um, out of that, you'll probably get maybe four hundred uh, at most. Uh, but you have put in the time and the effort, and you've bought all this equipment. So um, I think that that's sort of fair in 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 general. I obviously, because I paint quite a few of these, and I'm sort of doing it regularly, and this it is my main job. I I do charge less than that, and you can go to my website and uh, have a look to see what what price I've put on this. Hopefully, it won't be gone before before you have a look. I do have a newsletter as well that uh, you can sign up for on my website. That will uh, let you know about any of the paintings that I've made that maybe I haven't made a video about. Thank you very, very much for watching. It's, uh, it's been great, and I hope you've really enjoyed uh, this painting demonstration. So we'll see you next time, uh, if you subscribe to the channel.